yoga happens in daily life. And so this is why we are committed to our breath work, to our pranayama. This is why we are committed to our meditation practice. Blessings, how's everybody doing out there? Today in this video, we are talking about the journey of celibacy and transmuting sexual or sensual energy into our yoga practice, into our devotional practice, and into our spiritual life. Let's just dive right into it. A couple days ago, it was my eight year anniversary of committing to what is called continence, uh, what most people would call celibacy. And so that means I made a intentional conscious decision to withdraw and do the best I can to keep my energy to be really accountable for my energy and how it goes out. For some reason, I, through my intuition, know that from my past lives and for a great part of this life, I have misused sexual en energy or sensual energy. And I have objectified women for a large portion of my life to gratify my own wants and needs. And as a person who embarks on the spiritual journey of life, for anyone who calls themselves a yogi, for anyone who says they practice yoga, we, if we're doing that, we have to take time to look at ourselves to look at our life and see where it is that we might possibly have some blind spots, see where it is that we might possibly be causing harm, number one, to ourself, number two, to other people. And so through this process of self-exploration, through this process of inner dialogue and looking at ourselves, what we find is that we have a lot of blind spots. We find, if we're being honest, that we have a lot of work to do on ourselves. And so for me, it was quite obvious that if I want to make some progress in this life, spiritually speaking, if I want to pull myself closer to source, to the fountainhead of unconditional love, to the fountainhead of all life. If I want to pull myself closer to that, then I've got to do the work. And that means I've got to surrender the things that are keeping me from source. I have to surrender the things that are keeping me attached to this world. And so, oh my God, I mean, sexual energy is uh, it's a huge, huge distraction. We have an opportunity right now to look at that and say, well, maybe there is some room where I can at least take some time to step back and look at it and honestly assess, like, maybe I'm at a point in my life where I can make some adjustments. You know, maybe I'm not 20 years old anymore and maybe I've kind of sown my wild oats and maybe I can put some effort into reprogramming old patterns in my life so that I can create a new pattern that yields new results. Because, you know, just like a computer program, if we are running an old po program, that program is gonna give you the same results. But if you upgrade, if you change some things in that software, if you change some things in those patterns, then you're going to get new results. You're going to become something different you're going to experience a different kind of life because your divine consciousness is able to push through an influence that allows your ego and personality to get out of the way, if only for a moment, so that you can see with some clarity and in that seeing say, hmm, maybe, you know, I'm 30 years old now and I, I don't really need to be hanging out at the bar, uh, you know, 
drinking and getting intoxicated and having these one night stands. Or maybe you want to be in a committed relationship with one person and have something special. So if that's how you're feeling, maybe you're going to make some adjustments or changes in your life to actually make that happen instead of just having fun. Maybe you see that there's an opportunity in your life to call in a partner that gives you support and allows you to be yourself in a certain container of respect that is going to help you grow as a human being rather than keep you down or keep you immersed in bad habits. You know, so each one of us, you know, it's going to be different. So not everyone has to go hardcore. I'm going to go uh, into continence and abstinence and be a celibate. That might not be for everybody, but we do all have an opportunity to look instead of just operating on old programs that we get from our society, that we get from our culture that we get from TV and newspaper ads and all the movies, all those little hidden things in the matrix here that program us unconsciously to think that I have to be hyper promiscuous or this is how I have to, to act and be out in public as a guy to get to attract a woman. Maybe that's not how it really is. Maybe there's an opportunity to shed some skin here and what will emerge is something new. And when, once that new consciousness emerges because you've decided you're ready for it, then that shedding of the old skin is going to present something new to the world. And in that presentation of something new, something that you're embodying, something that's new in that presentation, then you're obviously going to attract something different, something new, something novel. And anytime something new and novel comes into our life, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure you're like me and that's exciting. And so now because of our conscious decision to do the hard work, to change some things about ourselves, some of our attachments, some of our old patterns, now that we've done that, we're starting to see this new consciousness emerge in ourselves and we're starting to see the outside world spirit change our experience of our life from day to day so that we're experiencing a, a new kind of life that brings us fulfillment, that brings us purpose, that is exciting. Real yoga happens in daily life. And so this is why we are committed to our breath work, to our pranayama. This is why we are committed to our meditation practice. This is why we are committed and devoted to being conscious about the food and the nutrition that we put into our temple, because we know that all of these decisions that we make, the result of these conscious decisions yields a conscious manifestation of a life that is imbued with beauty and love and connection and partnership and companionship and balance. And so let us make a commitment right now that we will take some time, each one of us out there, and examine inside, examine ourselves, and have the intention of finding where our blind spots are, finding where there is space to do some work, some real work, real work that actually challenges us real work that's going to ask us to give something up, to surrender. And I know today our topic of this video is, you know, celibacy, con continence, abstinence, re restraining or controlling our sexual energy. So that is the intention of this video. But let this practice of inner introspection be a regular tool that you as a yogi use in your life to keep yourself clear, to keep yourself in tune, to keep yourself true and on course. Because we are on a course, we are on a path and the, the destination, our destiny is yoga, is union with the divine, Satchitananda. Absolute existence, absolute knowing, absolute bliss. 
That is your very nature. Once we shed the skin and the confinement of this flesh and bone body, once we shed even the other shells and the other cases of our more etheric bodies and our astral bodies, once we shed all of that, it's back home to the pure, pure, ineffable reality of our true divine self, which is unconditional love. And so let's make it happen. Let's commit to that meditation practice. Let's commit to our yoga. Let's put, put this as the number one priority of our life. Because if, if we are feeling inspired and for some reason in our life, we have come across these teachings, the teachings of the masters that have come down from antiquity, from Christ Yeshua, from Sri Krishna, from Shaktimuni Buddha, from sages from far and distant lands, from great poets like Murumi. All these teachings, we won't let them go to waste. And the way that we acknowledge the masters, the way that we appreciate the masters, the way that we do this is by embodying the teachings and applying them to our own life. In whatever little way we can, we're always making one small step forward. Because the promise is, is self-realization. The promise is Christ or Krishna consciousness. Your true nature is the orgasm times a million. And it keeps getting better. It never stops. It just keeps getting better. That's who you really are. So if that's not some inspiration to take some time to look inside and dial it in and, and really be firm and committed to your spiritual practice and your yoga practice, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Imagine that that's who you really are. That little fleeting moment of an orgasm that you get with somebody else or by yourself, however that comes about, that little fleeting, you know, five second to a couple of minutes, depending on who you are you are actually that at every moment that can be your experience and it keeps getting better Whew. may all beings everywhere commit to their devotional spiritual practice and look inside as often as they can for their blind spots for their shadow for the, the places where there is work that needs to be done and may they commit to doing that work. May all beings everywhere find time every day for yoga meditation. My name is Michael and I'm right here with you. <laughs>